Hello, thank you for joining us for another Loose Pool podcast. We're coming at you quick and fast this week with our second one of the week. And this time we're focusing on Team Europe. And thankfully, we've got the vice captain, Carl Boys, with us. Also, as always, Emily Fraser and Joey Gray. To tune and meet on Team Europe at this year's Party Poker Moscone Cup. It's getting closer. We spoke about Team USA a few days ago. And, and, and now it's time to get our teeth stuck into Europe. And Carl, unlike America, you've not had any group training this year. You've not been able to see the guys one-on-one. -on -one. You've not seen them at tournaments. You've not had them all together yet. So how have you and Alex dealt with that? And, and how's that been going in the run-up to the event? Zoom, baby. Been on the old Zoom, haven't we? We've been flying on Zoom, to be fair. It's, it's like been better than ever. I don't know if Zoom was about when I was playing, actually. But the thing is, we've got weekly Zoom sessions, talking, practice. Yeah, we've not seen them in tournaments, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because, you know, you're playing all these singles events, Euro tours, frigging cash games and all that rubbish. It don't make a difference. When you go there, I've played in the event, fans or no fans, you know, I can picture roughly what the arena's going to be like. Even with no fans, you're still going to be under the cosh. You've got all the lads there, you're in a team, it's live telly, probably more people than ever will be tuning in because of the situation we're in. So, you know, the heat's on at the end of the day. So, you know, forget going to tournaments and watching the lads. I, I'm not really interested in all that. I'm interested in talking to them weekly, seeing how everyone's doing, gelling. And, you know, when we get there and, and, you know, we can prepare there. And, you know, me and Alex are always talking about things and our plan. And, you know, we're in good shape. Emily, because of the situation, we had to change the selection process this year. Europe have got the world champion plus four wildcard picks. So, you know, the heat is on because absolutely no excuses from Carl and Alex if it doesn't go their way this year. Yeah. Um, firstly, I just want to apologise. I don't have my hair and makeup done. So I just want to say sorry if I look gross right now. Um, no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I think obviously Fedor was like huge spot for Moscow Only Cup. Like everyone knew as soon as he won um, the world championship, like that, his, his place was cemented. Um, I've said it before. I think on paper, Europe looked super strong. Um, I think they've got to have a, a real big shambles on the day for them not to perform. Not saying that USA um, are going to get like, um, that are not going to perform, but I think everyone is going to be expecting Europe to come out so strong. And if anything, that's going to pile on the pressure more. And I think it's kind of good for Team USA because Team Europe there, even though potentially no crowd, they're in their hometown, so we're back over here. And this would be the prime time for them to get the cut back. Um, and so I think the pressure is on. Like everyone, Everyone's expecting them to pretty much come out and win. That's what everyone is saying. Um, and so say we come out day one and the score is, I don't know, two all or you get to three two, it's going to be tight. And we're going to be looking at it and going, All right, OK, we're ready for a big event here. Um, so I, I really do think the pressure is on. I think that, and I don't want to blow his own trumpet whilst he's here, I do think that Team Europe are going to have a stronger lead on the team sheets and things like that, just because Carl has the advantage where he's been so involved, I think, with the Moscone Cup before. He knows the team lineups very, very well. And I think that's one thing that USA need to look out for. Not that I'm hinting to you, Joe, or anything. I'm saying it very openly. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, Bring it on. <laughs> um, but also, Alex and Carl have never worked together before. This is the first time we're bringing up this this duo. And unlike Joey and Jeremy, who have been working together this year, they've seen each other and they've been working together, and they've probably had like that bond of that friendship before. I don't know. Carl could do a few things that Alex doesn't like. I've seen Alex under fire a little bit, and it might get a little bit heated between Carl and Alex. He might disagree on a few things. I don't know, Carl. Do you think that you guys could disagree during the event? I do with anyone. Are you well? What? <laughs> oh. Why are you with? Uh. Oh, to, no, I mean, to be fair... Um, like, have you been, had any head-to-head -head clashes so far, looking at... Honestly, not one. And I would tell you, everything, you know, where he's asked me, what's your opinion? And I've said it. 
he's been on the same vibe and vice versa. You know, it's going very... We're like best mates now, to be fair. So what if you put something down on the lineup that he doesn't agree with and yet it's all a bit listen, tense? Listen, he's the captain. If we lose, I'll say he's the captain. I'm just the <laughs> vice. <laughs> so I'm right there with you. If you, must, if you must be thinking, Carl, like you've stepped in as vice captain. So, you know, if for instance, there's an opportunity for you to step in as captain one year. If you totally balls it up this year, then that's kind of out the window. So... Oh, my game, Emily. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up to the plane. <laughs> okay. Nick, I'll let you move on, seeing as I'm not getting an honest answer. Well, Matt, it, it's just making me think, Carl, what's, what's the point of you? If you agree with everything Alex is saying, then yeah. why does he need a vice captain? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I never said I that. I said, what I said, what I said was, when he's asking my opinion, I've said something, we'll be on the same page. We're like best mates. No, I think next year Alex is on his own and I get called back for off the rail. <laughs> um, all right, the we'll... captains need cheerleaders. <laughs> Me and Carl can just be there. We'll just be the cheering section. We can get you some pom poms, Carl. <laughs> Blue ones. <laughs> But moving on, let, let, let's have a chat about Team Europe and the players individually. And and Josh Filler, first of all, he, he didn't play two years ago, strangely, but he was back last year. The two years he's played, he's been brilliant. He declared himself as the king. Um, Joey, I'm sure you'd, you'd prefer if Josh wasn't in the team this year. How important do you think this guy's going to be for Team Europe? Oh, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, he's uh, he's an unbelievable player. I mean... I've uh, I've spent countless hours watching his videos, watching him perform, and, and I mean the guy is just sick. I mean, so at the end of the day, you know he he's kind of you would think as far as a hype man and somebody that really really can get the team motivated. Um, Josh is somebody to fear. I mean, and Carl said it really well. I mean, you know, with with them not having events and and not being able to play with each other, and and I mean one thing everybody knows is is you know the Europeans. They, they know how to prepare. And so that's not something that I feel like they're going to be lacking. But um, at the end of the day, Josh is definitely going to play a huge role on their team this year, I believe. Carl, I'll ask you about Jason Shaw because I know you know him very well. And I felt a bit for Jason when the lockdown came in because it felt like he was in, in really great form in terms of tournament play. He'd won the international before Christmas. He'd won on the Euro Tour just after Christmas. And there was this run of big events coming up in the spring, which... You know, I, I felt for sure Jason was going to be there or thereabouts and, and may well snap one of those big events off. And, and then the lockdown happened and, and he's kind of, you know, he was in that almost the form of his life and it, it all got halted on him. You said to me last year when we were talking about who might make the European team that Jason would always be your first guy on the team sheet. Why is that? Well, I, I, I do like him a little bit like to Joshua. Obviously, Joshua is a little younger, so, you know, Jason's kind of mellowed out a bit. But they were very similar, you know, when when Jason was, was Josh, Joshua's age. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, j just going back to what you were saying about Joshua, I liken Joshua to, like, um, Earl Strickland, the way he plays. Just so fast, fiery, you know, and it's just hard to believe when, when I've been watching Josh over the last few years that he's ever going to play bad. I mean, when he won the US Open, he was unbelievable. I was there doing the commentary. Every match, he was just flawless. The way he took that tournament down, you know, it was nothing short of scandalous. And, and that's what Jason will bring to the team. But I think Jason will have a different dynamic this year. I think where he's maybe tried to be a bit like that type of player. I think with the age he's at now, he's got to come from a different angle and he will do. So, you know, I, I've got a lot of confidence in the lads. I know we keep harping on about, you know, we've got all the world champions and all this, but we, we all know we've got to come from this at a different angle purely because, you know, America have won the last two. So that's just the way it is. There's another guy Phil reminds me of, Carl, who's a guy who the Americans love to hate, gave it the big one, but always turned up at the Moscone Cup. And I think there's even a picture of Josh doing the same that you did when you beat Earl in 2013, where he's got his arms out after beating Shane last year. There's a, there's a little bit, I mean, maybe Josh won't take too kindly, actually, to being compared to yourself, Carl, because, you know, he won the US Open. Um, but there is a little bit of, it's something that the team needs, isn't it? <laughs> just dug it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah. I'm fired. Second I'm fired. pal. Second. <laughs> <laughs> and, and speaking of world champions, there was one who was left out last year. Emily was Albin Alshin. He was brilliant. He was, you know, if Europe had won that really close one at Ali Pali two years ago, Albin would probably have been the MVP. He was fantastic that year. His his record in the cup actually is a very very close second to Carl's in terms of you know the best ever players at the cup. And yet he was left out last year. Do you think Albin coming back might be that missing piece of the jigsaw for Europe? I do. I think that Albin's your kind of silent assassin um, without this coming across bad, but you kind of don't notice if he's not there, but you do kind of thing. He is that um, that silent guy that does sort of carry the team. He's very, very strong um, in that respect, probably a little bit overshadowed by someone like Filler, who... In my comparison, I would compare him to someone like Judd Trump in snooker at the moment. Always turns up, always up on form and things like that. So I do think that that is the stronger link for Team Europe this year, having Albin and Phil, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's still some question marks for Team Europe. I, uh, yeah. And Well, I'll ask you about one of the next question marks because we, we spoke in the last podcast with USA about Chris Robinson as a debutant. Fedor, we know, has achieved, you know, with the greatest respect to Chris, Fedor is a world champion. He's achieved that little bit more on the international stage. But Fedor's been in the World Pool Masters a couple of times, the World Cup Pool a couple of times. He's always struggled in that match room arena, hasn't he? So the, there is a bit of a question mark and, and perhaps more of a question mark than there is with Chris because with Fedor, there's genuine doubt based on those previous match room events. I, yeah, I would have more fear over someone like Fedor than Chris Robinson on Team USA because you're kind of like everyone's expecting it from Chris sort of thing. So if anything, that would give me more motivation to go out there and absolutely smash it. Um, but Fedor, he kind of, like what you were saying about Jason before lockdown, finished just saying, you know, he finished on a high world champion. Um, but he could come out here and, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I haven't been impressed with Fedor's performances at our matchroom events. Um, we've seen him at the World Pool Masters and the, and the World Cup of Pool. Um, the World Cup of Pool, he also had, you know, a little bit of falling outs, I think, with his team player that I remember back when I like worked on the TV department. So maybe, um, maybe he's not great at doubles. I don't know. You know, Carl and Alex are the ones that have been working with them, but they've all been, okay, you're all doing Zooms and stuff and you're all on your own table, but push comes to shove, you're out in that arena and you're in a doubles game and that shot clock is going. The player at the end of the day has to make their shot. And there's so much friction that can be. I mean, Carl, you've been out there, you've played it yourself. You know, you can put the blame on yourself if you play a bad shot or something in a doubles game. Fedor's not really... Um, sort of done well with that before whereas like Team USA have had quite a few cracks at the doubles um, with like the World Cup of Paul as such so I don't know I'm just kind of throwing it all out there a little bit is Cole from the practice sessions that you guys have had is there anyone in the team that isn't mixing or like gelling as as much? Well I mean obviously you know Obviously, there's a there's a tiny bit of a language barrier. So if I crack a joke, certain people might not fully understand it as well. You know, Jason will, won't he? So it's just things like that. But, you know, everyone's fine. And, you know, Fedor, you know, he has won the World Nine Ball Championships, you know, regardless of what anyone thinks or says, to go out there and win that the way he won it with the players he beats. You know, he's a class act, class player, and he's well respected in, in the in the pool world. And he's a young guy still. Do you know what I mean? He's still a baby, really. Yeah, so. but were you were you there in Qatar when he won that event? Uh, I wasn't there, no. Because mm, I, I was. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> and it is very okay, I'm not I'm not um Go on, spit it out. Go on. <laughs> No, I'm trying to think how I word it. That kind of arena of eight tables in like a pool room is no comparison to the prestige of the Moscone Cup and the sort of arena. And I know he was being placed, but these are long, these are long races as well. There were long races in the World Pool Championship. This is race to five. You don't know what can happen. You know, he can make a, a dumb shot and it can sort of be over. I don't know. I've got... Hmm. I just think... <laughs> 
you get a feeling about players, and you know he's definitely what you know one of the top pool players in the future. Is where you know no disrespect to Chris Robinson, but other than like a few people in America, we've not seen him play. So we're gonna have these question marks about somebody mm-hmm. like him. He could come here and play like unbelievable, and like be the next frigging Skylar Woodward for all we know. But with somebody like Fedor, where, you know, he has played in the arena, so at least he's had a feel of it. He's won the big tournaments. You know, he's won the World Youth and the World Men's, so he's got heart. So, you know, he, I, I just, I would be very shocked if he has a complete meltdown. Very shocked. Carl, I want to pick up on something else Emily mentioned there, was the doubles partnerships, because I think, you know, when we did Off the Rail last year, you commented that Europe were, were perhaps struggling with the doubles a little bit. Is that something in the training you've been thinking about, about who might work well together? And, what, what makes a good doubles pairing? Because I think, you know, it's fair to say yourself and Darren made a formidable doubles partnership at the World Cup, at the Moscone Cup. What do you look for when you're looking for two guys you might put together? You've got to have a mutual understanding and respect. And, you know, I can only go off when I played in the team what we used to do. So let's say somebody like Niels, we just knew that he wanted half an hour on the table. Even if it was the doubles match, he was the type of guy who wanted half an hour on his own, hitting balls, is where I'd go for a, you know, I could walk outside and someone would be saying, oh, you, you know, you need to go and grab your cues. But that's just the way I dealt with it. And that's the way he dealt with it. So, you know, we're speaking to the guys, understanding what, what they like to do, what they need to do. You know, and we've got a little idea who we think are going to be, you know, good pairings and, and the format and stuff. So, um, listen, it's all question marks at the end of the day, but that's what makes the Moscone such a great event. And, and Carl, a guy who's grown into the Moscone Cup the last couple of years, with obviously Clenty Catchy, he, he perhaps started a little bit slowly on his debut a couple of years ago, but second half of 2018, he'd really grown into the event, got a couple of big wins, and then last year, in the singles in particular, was brilliant. So, is with Catchy, is doubles that missing piece? Yeah, I think that's just all it is with Catchy. Again, could be a bit of a, a language barrier type thing. You know, that's what you've got to bear in mind, things like that. As you said, he's got a good singles record so far in the Moscone as he's played. You know, another young guy, well respected, you know, throughout the world. Won big matches. You know, he's played in a lot of matchroom events. Um, he beat Earl and uh, Jason in the World Masters. So he's, he's no stranger to the arena. It's just that other side of him, getting, you know, gelling right with the, with the doubles and Again, he's another one who he likes to take his time, so he's got to manage the shot clock a bit better. You know, you it's only a, a short shot clock, but you can still manage it pretty well. It's actually still quite a long time. So, you know, he's, I, I just can't wait. I know I'm a part of it, but I've always enjoyed watching the Moscow, and even when, you know, I wasn't involved in pool and, uh, you know, I've got a front row seat. So, you know, it's all good. I'm, I no, actually yeah. really want, I'm oh, sorry, I no, go on, really, really hope that, uh, catchy excels this year because I think he's kind of he's he's an absolutely fantastic player catchy and he's proven this with um you know events that he's won as such and it would be a shame for him to sort of go out and to have that sort of tarnish for the Moscone Cup record but I would love to see him to come out and and actually shine at the Moscone and I think that would give him some confidence boost in in the matchroom events as such I think it would be really good for him um I'm going to ask an awkward question to Joey. Joey, who is the weakest European player, in your opinion? In my opinion, um, I believe, you know, you brought up a really good point earlier. Uh, no, uh, don't sidetrack. <laughs> no, just no, just saying, I'm, you should be a politician, <laughs> Joey. I'm just reflecting on that. Um, I want you to <laughs> reflect. I'm Say reflecting. it. Um, uh, you said Fedor, you know, um, Maybe be being able to struggle in the uh, in the partner the the partner pairings and, and and such, but you know I would have to say I mean due to performance I mean Kachi you know he it seems like he was trending towards the right direction, and I think maybe him not being the youngest player on the team again might help him this year. But you know Fedor is just it's such a uh, such a question mark with him. But I do feel like he's probably going to have the probably the weakest performance of all of them. In my opinion. I mean, I'm throwing that out there. Oh. <laughs> and that is an awkward question. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Will you guys think about that at all? And I'll ask you first, Joey, and, and then Carl the same question. Will you think about the selections with the opponents at all? I know, for example, last year when 
Josh beat Shane a couple of times. Skyler was saying to, to Johan and Jeremy, put me out there. You know, they were trying to predict where Filler would play and, and Skyler wanted to play against him. Will you be trying to do any of that, Joey? Trying to predict where your strengths and weaknesses might be playing to try and match that accordingly? Well, yeah, definitely. And I mean, at the end of the day, Jeremy's got a lot of experience with this and uh, he knows all the players. I mean, he's done commentary on every single player in the world. So he knows, I mean, a lot. And, uh, you know, I've been studying and I know, I know our players very, very well and um, not as well as the Europeans. I know their styles and I know their strengths, but, you know, I don't know them personally. I mean, not all of them. Uh, Jeremy really does. And he's been there and seen it. So at the end of the day, I just try to offer the best perspective from my side of things and kind of, you know, bounce those ideas back and forth with Jeremy. But I really trust his decisions. <clears throat> Cole, how, how will it work with you and Alex? Will you be kind of taking the lead on selections? Will it be a joint venture? And will you think about, oh, OK, last match of the first night is probably going to be Shane, so let's put Josh out there, for example? Not so much like that. I mean, funny you should mention that. You know, a lot of our conversations recently have, you know, I'm putting my team sheet in, he's putting his team sheet in, and we're seeing if we're on similar pages, then we'll discuss it and things like that. But, you know... It's, it's been a breath of fresh air working with Alex because, you know, we have gotten really well and we're having a good laugh and, you know, we're, we're bringing a different dynamic to the team this year. And, you know, we, we, we know the guys can all play pool. There's no question about it. And even though they're a young team, they've still got experience. You know, when you look at Albin, Jason, you know, Joshua, they've all won the MVP. You know, they know what the Moscone is about. Catching, as you said, singles does great because he's that type of individual type guy. But we wanted to give him, you know, a chance, you know, because he, he he's a good looking lad. He's a young lad. He's great for pool at the end of the day. So he, he's that type of guy who once he clicks with doubles, he, he's going to go on and, you know, he's going to be in the Moscone for years to come. And as Emily said before, I think I think this is his time to shine. And, we, you know, with Fedor, who knows, world champion, star in the future. I don't think it's bad. It's not bad having a young team. I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's good. I mean, you could look at Matru Multisport. We're a young team and we're bloody brilliant. So I do think that <laughs> the youth is in there. Um, Carl, who do you think, um, who do you get most nervous about out of your team? Who do I get most nervous about? Yeah, who are you most nervous about? Because to be fair, I'm not really that type of person. I don't... I mean, Who's maybe, Alex most nervous about? To be fair, maybe when I'm there, it'd be a bit different. Maybe it'd be like, um, <laughs> oh, hold on a minute, this is a bit of a different feeling. Cause, <laughs> so last you few have years, experienced the vice-captain like, role before. You've obviously always took a step back and you're like, like, say how me and Nick are. We're kind of unbiased a little bit and you're... you're you want the event to do well because you're there like working on the event, but now you're vice captain for team Europe. You haven't kind of been on that side of things before. No, I haven't. Uh, but at the minute there's no nerves. There's no nothing. Uh, when I get there, maybe we're like, Oh, please. Okay. Oh. Let's remind everyone about that then. <laughs> when we get to it. Um, look, be before we go, I'm going to ask you a question, which I'll ask you again in a week's time, just to see if anything's changed. But I think it'd be a bit pointless me asking, a prediction who's going to win the Moscone Cup because, Carl, you're going to say Europe and Joey, obviously, USA. But what about a score? What will the score be in the Moscone Cup, Carl? I'm going to say 11-7. To Europe, presumably. And Joey? I think it's going to be probably 11-7 probably the other way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like and where are you sitting? As long as there's no zero. Um, <laughs> like... <laughs> As long as we're still playing on yeah. Thursday. I'll be there all day, every day at 11.10. And I don't mind who takes it. 11.10 would be incredible. Um, I'll, I, th I think Europe got this 11.8, personally. Oh, but Nicholas. I know, but 11, 10 <laughs> all would be amazing. Um, actually, and, and there's another question. If, <laughs> if, if we had to... So if it goes 10 all, the last match is singles... And the captain picks there and then. But, Carl, if I had to ask you to put in an envelope the name of the guy you'd put out at 10-all now, whose name would you be giving us? Emily Fraser. 
I'll put it in the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I asked that one badly. So if if I need you to pick now, who's going to play? Um, either Joshua, Jason, Fred, or Catchy or Alvin. Oh, you're useless. You're <laughs> sacked. Can we get a more straight answer from you, Joey? Uh, you know, it's going to be a toss up. I mean, I, you know, like the thing is, I think with a situation like that, you have to really get the team together and figure out what the best scenario is. You can't just say, oh, just based off of last year's performance, you know, you got to be in the heat of the battle to make that decision. So, but I mean, judging off of last year's performance, I mean, you got to say Skyler. I mean, he just comes with it. So. I, never I never want... a yes or no answer, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, to be fair, it's such a tough tough question because, you know, you could be there and if it's gone 10-10, there could be someone who's, like, completely stood out in the singles. And so you're thinking, well... And then and then you've got to ask the question, do you want to play? You know, it's 10-10. Yeah. You might not want to play. I would fancy the <laughs> They if might you want to be yes, the best, with like a stutter or something, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, not everybody wants to be under that pressure. <laughs> if you want to be the best in the world, you have to always say yes in that situation. One hundred yeah, percent. Even if you're lying to yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Em, if you got to pick, if it wasn't captain's choice, if it was promoter's choice, and you got to pick that match, who who would you want to see? We all know it's promoter's choice anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Um, That's going to be quick to elsewhere. It's ten all. Yeah. It's ten all. Um, I would like to see. Chris against. Oh, like something. Do you know what I'd love to see? Like Catchy versus uh, Billy, final match. Wow. Do you know what I, I mean? Because yeah. just you take it away from the filler, the shame, the Jason. You're just like, let's just go ratchet and just put Catchy versus Billy. I think that would be wild. Okay. Maybe we replace the fans' choice with promoters' choice match. I like that. I was going to go for. Um, <laughs> I regret saying that. <laughs> I was going to go for Skyler versus Josh because that almost felt like a ten-all match on the last day last year, and it was such a great game. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see Skyler versus Josh. But, uh, but we'll see. Hopefully, we get that. Hopefully, we get to ten-all. We will. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, guys. Thank. <laughs> Joey wants it done early. That's definitely not what we what we want, Em. No. <laughs> we want a late night Friday. It'd be be just just what the doctor ordered after everything this year. But look, guys, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back. We're going to do another loose pool next week. So once we're in the bubble in Coventry and we're all locked in our hotel rooms waiting for our COVID results, we'll we'll jump on and do a loose pool. So if you've got any questions for us. Let us know. But for now, Carl, Joey, Emily, thank you very much. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you.